Welcome into Duval Daily presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thanks so much for tuning in here on Wednesday, March 6th. NFL tag deadline day has come and gone. The NFL combine has come and gone. The Jaguars, they tagged Josh Allen. They also released Darius Williams. They released Rayshon Jenkins, Foley Fatu Kasi. So you're starting to see the picture here get a little bit clear where the Jaguars are going this offseason. Some more moves are coming down the pike, obviously. Uh, the new league year starts next week. The free agency period, first wave of free agency, starts next week as well. Uh, we're going to dive into a post-combine, post-NFL tag deadline, seven-round mock draft for your Jacksonville Jaguars here. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear. So we're going to dive into some of the machinations, some of the different things I think the Jaguars are going to do prior to the NFL draft, and then we'll get into the seven-round mock draft for y'all. Uh, I'll tell you what right now. I expect the Jaguars to spend money in free agency at the wide receiver position, whether it's on Calvin Ridley or getting someone else. I think you know the situation with Calvin Ridley is fluid right now. This is a team that, because they used the franchise tag on Josh Allen, now Calvin Ridley has the opportunity to potentially hear from other suitors, right? The Jaguars are in a sticky situation because – if they sign Calvin Ridley before the start of the new league year, it's a second round pick to the Falcons. If they wait till after the start of the league year, it is a third round pick to the Falcons. If they were able to franchise tag Calvin Ridley, they could protect themselves from other teams being able to sign him or, or offer uh, contracts to him while also being able to keep that second round pick and only send the third round pick to the Falcons. But they're not able to do that because they couldn't get a deal done with Josh Allen. We've talked all about that. But the fact of the matter is, there's now going to be an opportunity for Calvin Ridley's representation to hear offers, to hear money talk, right? Um, you know, starting with the legal tampering period, so the Jaguars run the risk of losing Calvin Ridley. They may be able to bring him back. I know he wants to be back. He doesn't want to learn a new offense, doesn't want to learn a new team, a new playbook, all that stuff. But money talks, right? Money absolutely talks. And so we'll see how it plays out. But I expect the Jaguars however it shakes out, whether it's Calvin Ridley or someone else, to have a starting caliber receiver uh, signed during the free agency period. I also think they sign at least one mid-tier starting level corner. I think Chidobi Awuzie makes a lot of sense from the Cincinnati Bengals. He has press man experience. He's got size. He's got length, athleticism. Uh, Jeff Okuda makes a lot of sense as well. This is a guy that played in Ryan Nielsen's defense last year. Maybe both of these guys. PFF projects Chidobi Awuzie to get 10 – Two years, excuse me, ten and a half million. Uh, that would be like a four million dollar twenty twenty four cap hit, which is negligible, uh, not a big deal at all there. So if the Jaguars could do that, I think that would make sense. I think Okuda would be much, much cheaper. He has had health and health issues throughout his career, right, uh, early career, but a super talented kid. I think maybe you bring in both of those guys. It's not going to be super expensive, and now you have uh, three guys on the outside plus Buster Brown. Um, and Gregory Jr. and your young guys you drafted last year to kind of fill out that room and you still attack corner in, in the draft in all likelihood. I think they also bring in someone to rush the passer behind Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker. They've been linked to Hassan Reddick. They've been linked to Daniil Hunter. I think that they kind of tried to correct the mistake they made last year going into the 2023 season by not really adding any uh, proven pass rusher outside of Dewan Smoot, who was coming off the Achilles prior to the season. I think they bring in a center to compete with Luke Fortner. Won't be super pricey. It won't be one of the top, top guys on the market in all likelihood, but someone to compete with Luke Fortner. It's, it's looking like they keep Cam Robinson, Brandon Sheriff, Foya Lucan, probably Zay Jones as well, but I think that they are going to restructure some contracts to make it all work this offseason. They know the Josh Allen tag number will eventually go down once they get his deal done. Uh, that'll impact the cap a little bit less, and they'll be sitting with a little bit more cap space. And I think that clearing some space with some other, you know, potentially void years, restructures, extensions, what have you, can can help the Jaguars out as well. Uh, we will see how it plays out, but that's kind of how I'm seeing what the Jaguars will probably do this offseason prior to the NFL draft. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into that seven-round Jaguars mock draft. At 17 overall, I think Trent Baalke would probably like to trade down in this situation. In this draft, which I ran over on the PFF NFL mock draft simulator, uh, which I usually do NFL mock draft database, wanted to spice it up, change up the flavor a little bit of this one, see what PFF has going on over there. Um, 
all three of the cornerbacks that the Jaguars fans are kind of linking them to at this point, which is Quinion Mitchell, Terry and Arnold, and Nate Wiggins off the board. I think Kool-Aid McKinstry absolutely belongs in this range, but with the Jones fracture, with not having any testing, we're not sure how that's going to play out. So I think that could be a potential faller just due to the injury situation and not knowing everything going on with him. Uh, There's some different options here. I have the Jaguars going with a tackle who they will believe can play guard in year one, and that is Amarius Mims, the ultimate bulky built prospect Six foot eight, 340 pounds, 36 and one eighth inch arms, 11 inch hands. He is a massive, massive human, but he's also an incredible athlete. 507 40 yard dash at that size is crazy. 25 and a half inch vert, 93 broad. And this is not a raw prospect, despite what my, some people might try to tell you. He is inexperienced, but he is not raw. He is not a project. His tape is fantastic when he's on the field. My only real question about Amarius Mims is, is this going to be a guy because of the size and because what we've seen over the last year or so, is this going to be a guy with lingering injury issues? Uh, He is a massive, massive human, missed some time in 2023, didn't finish the combine with some tightness in his leg. Uh, So, How's it going to play out for Amarius Mims from a health standpoint? I'm not sure, but I could certainly see Trent Balky. And again, this is a predictive mock draft. I could see Trent Balky if he's sitting there at 17, if the corners he likes are off the board. I could see him trying to trade down, but we've we've seen maybe teams aren't going to be as excited to trade with Trent Balky uh, as they were last year early in the draft. Obviously, late in the draft, they weren't allowing him to do what he wanted to do, according to to Balky himself. So. Uh, We'll see how it plays out. I think the Jaguars would like to trade down from 17, but if they stick and pick in this scenario, Amarius Mims certainly makes sense as someone who could kick inside and play guard for you early on and then kick out to tackle, you know, maybe in 2025, right? You have Cam Robinson on a contract year. You have Walker Little on a contract year. Anton Harrison's going to be around. He is more naturally a left tackle, played left tackle his whole life until – 2023 where he kicked over to right tackle for the Jaguars but I think if you had Anton Harrison and Amarius Mims as your tackles of the future that would make a lot of sense Um, we'll see how it plays out right 48 overall there are a ton of wide receivers and cornerbacks we like here a cornerback is still a need I think despite what I kind of outlined for free agency but uh, we're going to continue to build the trenches because there are so many wide receivers and cornerbacks that I think uh, Trent Baalke looking at this is going to say hey 96, 115, we're going to be able to go get those guys that are going to play on the perimeter, but we need to keep keep building up the trenches here. Defensive tackle, Chris Jenkins, he is bulky built, right? Six foot three, 299 pounds, 34 inch arms, 49, 140 yard dash, 30 inch vert, 97 broad, 29 bench press reps with 34 inch arms. That shows incredible strength and that shows up on the tape too, right? He is strong. He is super stout against the run. He's smart against the run. He has a budding pass rush skill set. The moves are there. You didn't see them unleashed all that often, but you have an inside spin. You have a bunch of hand moves, swims, et cetera, that I think uh, can, can continue to develop at the next level, has NFL bloodlines. I think Chris Jenkins could be a, a tremendous fit for the Jaguars at 48 overall. At 96, you know, still need corner. Max Melton, Renardo Green, Andrew Phillips, Kyrie Jackson all come off the board. Ennis Rakestraw came off at 47 right before the Jaguars' 48th pick. But we've got cornerback Jerry and Jones still available. Six foot, 190 pounds, 30 inch arms, so he kind of passes the threshold to potentially play outside. 438 40 yard dash. He was blazing. 39 and a half inch vert, very explosive. 10 9 broad. Really impressive day for Jerry and Jones at the Combine. And this is a player I've been telling you all about for a while. He played in the slot mostly at FSU, but I think he can play outside. He's physical. He's aggressive. He is sticky in coverage. I think he plays nickel in year one for you, where he primarily played at FSU last year, and then perhaps develops into more for you down the road. But if you're talking about having Tyson Campbell, Chidobia Wuzie, Jeff Okuda, and, and Jerry and Jones as your top four. And then you also have Buster Brown and Gregory Jr. I think you're starting to look at a cornerback room that makes a lot of sense in this modern era of football where you've got to stop the pass. And there's a bunch of talented young quarterbacks in your division. 
And you also got guys that can come in and, and play the run, right? Jerry and Jones, a very good run defender. Tyson Campbell, a very good run defender. Chidobi Awuzie, same thing. And Jeff Okuda, again, when healthy, can certainly do that as well. So uh, this is a nice little uh, room of cornerbacks you got now developed here. At 115 overall, wide receiver Javon Baker, six foot one, 202 pounds, 32 and a quarter arm. So he's got good size, good length, big hands, 454 4 40 yard dash app. Not blazing, certainly, but when you watch him on tape, I don't think that's why you're getting excited about him. He did have a 35-inch vert, which shows explosiveness, 10-1 broad, but this is a guy that can separate at the top of the stem. He has quick movements. He can plant his foot and go in the opposite direction. He can come down with contested catches. He's explosive, can make guys miss with the ball in his hands. I think when you're talking about complementing uh, what the Jaguars currently have in their wide receiver room, Javon Baker makes a lot of sense. Again, someone who Trevor Lawrence can feel he can throw the football up to and he has a good chance of coming down with it. And then also a guy that separates, right, at all three levels. So Javon Baker, I think, would make a lot of sense for the Jaguars here uh, in the fourth round. And quite frankly, I think he should be off the board. But again, this is a loaded, loaded wide receiver class. At 117 overall, we're kind of continuing to fortify the trenches here with guard Cooper BB, six foot three, 322 pounds, only 31 and a half inch arms, which is not bulky built. But on day three, that is where sometimes bulky will let his length requirements go by the wayside when he sees value in a player. And I think he would definitely see value in Cooper BB, who is ready to start right now on the interior of the offensive line and start for a long time in the NFL. Very good pass protector, mauler in the run game, terrific with his hands, uh, a very good athlete overall, right? Uh, there's so many talented athletes at the offensive line spot in this year's draft. But Cooper Beebe, he did a good job for himself. He ran fairly fast, looked good, looked smooth. So I think this is the type of guy that could come in and start right away for you for a long time. And he should be a day two pick, but maybe because of those shorter arms, maybe because of the freak athletes in this class, he does get driven down the board in this scenario he did over on the PFF mock draft simulator. And I think that he would be a perfect fit for the Jaguars coming in here and being able to, uh, maybe start in year one, and if not, certainly starting for you for a long time uh, beyond 2024. 152 overall, tight end Jared Wiley, six foot six, 249 pound, 33 and a quarter arms, 462 40 yard dash, really impressive, 37 inch vert. That's what really pops out at you. And this is a guy, really impressive pass catcher, but also a guy that can be an inline tight end. You can line him up at Y. He will block his ass off for you. He's got the good length, the um, the uh, footwork in, in pass protection. He can move around the formation, line up at F tight end, line up as a, in, as a slot player, line up in the backfield. He does not drop the ball, has very consistent hands, hauls in contested targets for you. Find space, which you love to see against zone. I think that Trevor Lawrence could certainly use someone who just has a better feel for finding space, has some wiggle at the top of his uh, route stem, and, and I think you can use him in a lot of different ways as a pass catcher. So I think Jared Wiley, the reason you draft him, beyond the fact that he can just help your offense in the passing game, is that Luke Farrell is going into the final year of his rookie deal. You could probably sign him back, right? Uh, but if you if you want to get ahead of potentially feeling like you have to sign Luke Farrell. You can bring in Jared Wiley to be that Y tight end for you. Obviously, you drafted Brenton Strange last year. You have Evan Ingram, but I think bringing in another tight end that can really get the job done makes sense in a Doug Peterson scheme and a Doug Peterson offense. At 196 overall, Edge Miles Cole. This guy is, you know, if Amarius Mims is the most bulky built player I've ever seen, Miles Cole is right behind him. Six foot six, 278 pounds, 37 inch arms. 10 inch hands, 467 40 yard dash, 35 inch vert, 10 foot broad. You stand him up next to Trayvon Walker, it looks pretty similar, right? Now, Walker was a lot, lot better player coming out. Uh, if, if Trayvon Walker was a, a project as a pass rusher, I don't know what you would call Miles Cole because he's way behind. But a guy who, if you bring him in late in the draft, trying to just get him in your system, get him coached up, see if you can get anything out of him. Because again, he has all the physical traits to be an impact type of player, but just is not there right now in his development. So I think that the Jaguars could definitely go in that direction at 196. At 211, kicker Will Reichard out of Alabama. Accurate, big leg, good on kickoffs. I say, let's roll. 
uh, with Will Reichard, obviously going to compete with Riley Patterson, who they brought back. We'll see if they do anything else at kicker. But I think if you bring in a Will Reichard, you can feel good about the future of your kicking position. Um, 234 overall wouldn't be a Trent Balky draft without a linebacker, right? Edifon Olafashoio, six foot and a half, 236 pounds, nearly 33 inch arms. That is crazy length at six foot. Uh, four, six, four, five, six, 40 yard dash, excuse me, 39 and a half inch vert, 10, eight broad, super explosive athlete, uh, been very good in coverage during his time at Washington has had some injury issues. Uh, not sure where he's going to end up going, but he was one of the most impressive linebackers at the combine. He has pretty good tape. So, um, potentially he, he could be off the board way earlier than this, but again, this is how I'm projecting Trent bulky would play this if the board falls this way, the way it did in this PFF mock draft simulator, which of course mock draft simulators are fantastic, but you're never going to absolutely nail the way the NFL draft goes in terms of what happens in these mock draft simulators. It's always going to present some surprises, some trades, different things that kind of shake up the board. Uh, This is just an example of what I think could happen in this scenario with Trent Baalke pulling the trigger for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Would love to know what you think about this mock draft. If you enjoy the content here, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear. Y'all have a good one.